Mina, Ohio Gazimus, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. In case anyone is wondering what Ohio Gazimus means, because that's not a normal greeting from me, the Mina means everyone in Japanese, and Ohio Gazimus is good morning in Japanese. I just feel like every now and then I need to remind everyone what the heck it is I'm talking about, because no, I don't just talk to other weeaboos and otakis. I try to talk to my normal um, fellow Americans at times as well. So. 1 Kings chapter 14. For anyone who thinks they can get by something on God, this chapter lays out a really solid warning. I'm just going to start 1 Kings chapter 14 verse 1 and I'm just going to start reading. At that time, Abijah the son of Jeroboam became sick. And Jeroboam said to his wife, Please arise and disguise yourself, that they may not recognize you as the wife of Jeroboam and go to Shiloh. Indeed, Ahijah the prophet is there who told me that I would be king over this people. Also take with you ten loaves, some cakes, and a jar of honey, and go to him. He will tell you what will become of the child. And Jeroboam's wife did so. She arose and went to Shiloh and came to the house of Ahijah. But Ahijah could not see, for his eyes were glazed by reason of his age. So apparently she didn't need to disguise herself because of Ahijah directly. He was blind. He could not see. I guess it was to make sure that no one saw her coming and then report to him, hey, Jeroboam's wife is heading your way. So, you know, just, just to give you a heads up and a warning on this, I guess she disguised herself not for his sake, but for the sake of the people that lived in the area. Verse 5, Now the Lord had said to Ahijah, Here is the, son, the, bleh, here is the wife of Jeroboam coming to ask you something about her son, for he is sick. Thus and thus you shall say to her, for it will be when she comes in that she will pretend to be another woman. And so it was when Ahijah heard the sound of her footsteps as she came through the door, he said, Come in, wife of Jeroboam. Why do you pretend to be another person? For I have been sent to you with bad news. If anyone... It's, it's kind of like one of those things we um, hear about in church a lot. And pretty much every believer you know, who believes in the Christian God will say, Yeah, he's all-powerful, he's all-knowing, he's everywhere at once. The three omnis, omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. Uh, big theological words for you guys. And we kind of take that for granted. We're just like, yeah, he's all this, he's all that, he's infinite and stuff. But we need to remember, he really does know everything. He really is everywhere. He really can do anything. You really think you're going to take the Lord by surprise? You think you're going to fool his eyes? Come on. But the say, while I can say come on so quickly and easily, this particular passage drives it home. Really drives it home. And then Ahijah the prophet went on to speak, indeed, very bad news that the kingdom would be ripped away from Jeroboam, that his son would die, and that the son would die as soon as the wife set foot on the threshold of the home. It was, it, and that's, by the way, in verse 17. I'll, I'll spare you a little bit of, ch of chapter reading there for this time. Why? Maybe I'm just feeling generous. I don't know. But yeah, right there in verse 17. So if you think that you can somehow avoid God's gaze, somehow avoid Him knowing, you can fool everyone around you, your disguise can be so impeccable, your mask can be so flawless, and no one knows, you're not getting away from the Lord. And if someone really does hear the voice of God, and someone really is like a prophet, you're not getting away from that. You can't. You can't trick or fool God. And that has so many applications to so many things in life, but basically, I'm just hitting the generic point and the general point here. You can try to fool God. You may succeed in fooling others. You might succeed in fooling the man of God. You may even succeed in fooling yourself. But you're not going to fool God. Nothing you do or say or think is going to escape His eyes. And if he wants to tell one of his servants what's going on, you're not going to stop that. You can't. So be mindful that you cannot hide from the eyes of an all-seeing God. I guess maybe in a sense Illuminati really is confirmed. <laughs> Except for it's not some secret organization. It is God himself who has his eye on you always. Not to just be some kind of creeper or voyeur or some you know, heavenly pervert or heavenly big brother. He's your Heavenly Father, and He loves you, and He wants the very best for you. Yeah, He knows everything you're doing. And if you, if you can believe that He does know everything you're doing, please also believe how much He loves you and how much He wants to help you. And at the same time, if you do sin and you go against Him like Jeroboam was doing, you're not going to get away from that, and you can't hide from Him. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.